There was a point in time where the Dutch possessed one of history's most powerful navies. This was a natural consequence of their endless war on the sea, seeking to finish what Caligula started by fucking Poseidon to death with pointy sticks. This time, though, they were doing it with guns. This led to the Dutch having some killer naval leaders throughout their history, but one in particular is quite interesting. Michiel de Ruyter, a man who could be argued as one of the greatest admirals in military history, is today's topic. It's time for spice wars, shenanigans, and beating the shit out of the English for fun. Michiel Adrianzoon de Ruyter was born on March 24th, 1607 in Vlissingen on what used to be the island of Valkaren. That's right, time is a flat circle. Now apparently the moniker de Reiter was not his birth surname and instead was a nickname given to him later. Its exact meaning is unclear, but the definition I am sticking with is it meaning raider, as in pirate or privateer. I say this because Michiel the Raider is really cool and literally no other reason. Anyways, this was a time of great strife for the Dutch Republic. They were in the middle of the Eighty Years' War with their former overlords the Spanish. The Back and forth was draining everyone, and though the Dutch were pretty much winning at this point and Spain was fucking bankrupt, realistically the war had grown to a stalemate and everyone was exhausted. A truce was brokered in 1609 to let both sides put themselves back together for 12 years before they started killing each other again. This was the environment that little Michiel found himself in. He was the son of a former Navy brat who now worked as a beer brewer, so similar to Sablin, his life was pointed at the sea from the get-go. At the age of 11, he was sent to apprentice as a boatswain, joining the Dutch merchant marine in the process, which was rather typical for the time. What wasn't typical was Spain existing, so in 1622, when the truce broke, Mikhail joined the Dutch army. He fought in a single battle at Bergen op Zoom and immediately decided that the navy was, in fact, a better place for a guy like him, returning to the Merchant Marine where he would stay for the next couple of decades. In the meantime, he would marry in March of 1631, but his wife would die in childbirth that December and the kid would follow pretty soon after. He remarried in 1636 and this time it went better and they would have five kids of which four would survive the curse of infant mortality. The next year, he got a brief commission to hunt some pirates before, in 1641, he was placed in command of his first real warship. He would participate in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent, uh, that one, where he himself would perform quite well by all accounts, with the Spanish learning the term Pyrrhic victory the hard way. For now, though, this would be a one and done, with the Dutch going home and De Ruyter returning to the Merchant Marine. During the intervening nine years, he made a shitload of money sailing around and trading, and realistically could have chosen to retire right then and there. However, fate is a fickle bitch who doesn't play by the rules. For instance, his second wife would die in 1650. He would get remarried again two years later, and he did decide to retire after this, which lasted all of five minutes before the the Anglo-Dutch Wars kicked off and he was asked to come back into military service. The Eighty Years' War had ended in 1648, only for the Dutch to immediately end up at war with the English less than five years later. For any other country, this would result in a very bad time. The Netherlands, coincidentally, are not any other country. Poseidon can shove his big golden fork up his ass. The Admiralty asked him real nicely and he went fine, but only for one, one, expedition. Like I said, she's a fickle bitch. He was enlisted as a Commodore, placed in command of a Zealander squadron of privately funded warships. He would fight in three major battles of this war, the most important of which being the Battle of Plymouth. His main purpose in this one was convoy escort. The Dutch Republic relied heavily on trade, and the English being able to cut that off was not a good thing. In August of 1652, one such convoy set out, and de Ruyter was charged with protecting it. He brought with him 29 fighting ships, not including the 10 already charged with escorting the convoy. He tried to bait out an English fleet before the convoy had left, but they were having none of it. The English wouldn't actually be stirred to action until the convoy had set off. 47 ships under command of George Iescu went after the Dutch on August 15th. They had more ships and better ships. In any other engagement, the Dutch get their asses beat. This did not transpire. Instead, the battle was a draw? Neither side lost any ships, and there was only about 100 casualties on each side. However, the English had their pride dented rather severely. De Ruyter, on the other hand, had immediately proven himself as a very capable commander, and from a certain point of view, he did technically win. The Dutch fleet avoided destruction, and and got to bunk the English rats around a fair bit. This caused his popularity back home to skyrocket, making him a local celebrity overnight. His next battle was at Kentish Knock, which was a loss, but it really wasn't his fault because politics and other trivial bullshit, and realistically, he was the reason the Dutch fleet actually survived the engagement. Upon his return, he was given the equivalent of a nice medal for literally being a badass in the first battle and being able to convince his superior of the value of tactically running away in the second. His final action was part of the Battle of the Gabbard, which went very badly, but again,
again, it wasn't really his fault. There's only so much you can do when you don't command the entire fleet and are outnumbered and outgunned. Johann de Witt, the current leader of the Dutch Republic, and coincidentally the one that also got eaten, even offered him supreme command of the navy following the death of the previous guy, an offer which was declined. He instead took up the vice admiral position in Amsterdam. Such a humble man. This shit is just a warm-up round though, things are gonna pick up pretty quickly. Following the end of the first war with England, in 1655 he was sent down to the Med to fuck up some Barbary pirates while in command of the... Uh, fuck, Dutch isn't a real language. Upon his return the next year, he was sent to the Baltic Sea to fight Sweden, relieving the siege of Danzig and apparently becoming friends with the King of Denmark. He was sent back in 1659 and was able to beat the shit out of Sweden and help liberate Nyborg, which got him knighted by said King of Denmark. It gets better though, because the English were back for round two. After some more merchant escorting in the Med, he was sent down to West Africa to retake some forts that the English had stolen. After he succeeded, it was time for the counterattack, which saw him haul ass across the entire fucking Atlantic in 1665 to raid around North America. He raided Barbados, captured a bunch of English merchant ships, then went up north to Newfoundland, blowing up more shit and even occupying St. John's for a minute. Maybe that's why Newfies are completely fucking incomprehensible. Anyways, while he was gone, shit had hit the fan. The Second Anglo-Dutch War had begun in earnest, and in June the Dutch fleet got fucking mauled at the Battle of Lowestoft. The commander of the fleet was killed, and when de Ryder returned, he was pretty quickly offered the position to hopefully turn things around. This time, he actually accepted the role, making him a lieutenant admiral, which I believe was the highest naval rank in the country that could be achieved without political shenanigans. He took the Seven Provincian as his flagship, and he kicked things off with a bang, pretty decisively winning the four-day battle in June of 1666. The battle immediately following, in July, would go much less good, however. De Ryder's second-in-command made a couple of dumb fuck decisions, the wind seemed determined to screw the Dutch over, and De Ryder himself was almost killed several times. However, this battle had pretty much bankrupted England, and De Ryder was able to save the majority of the actual ships in the fleet, and the Dutch were seaworthy by the end of August. Essentially, it could have been much fucking worse. The dumb fuck second was also pretty much politically ruined back home, so silver linings, I guess. They would make up later down the line for the sake of actually winning the war, and would actually end up fighting together a fair bit. Hell, they even had their names on the same ship class, so things turned out okay in the end. One defeat wasn't gonna get this guy down, though. He would bounce back by next June, taking part in the raid on the Medway, which, as you may know, was one of the most lopsided massacres in naval history. They blew up 43 ships and captured the flagship of the English fleet and towed it home to use for birthday parties. This ended the war pretty quickly, with the Peace of Breda following in July of 1667. Deraitre was actually forbidden from going to see by De Witt for a couple of years, as he was terrified of losing his best guy to, like, the flu or some shit. However, comma, not to take a humiliation lying down, the English came back for round three in 1672, this time allying with the French? De Ryder was pretty quickly put in command of 75 hastily mustered ships, facing off against a combined fleet of 92 ships put forth by the French and English. This conflict would be his magnum opus, and showed his incredible understanding of the art of war, utilizing the terrain, exploiting the known weaknesses of his enemies, like knowing the English had no money and that the French were fucking pussies, fighting engagements on his terms, and overall just being a smart dude. At the Battle of Sol Bay, he fought the combined fleet to a draw, preventing a blockade of the Netherlands and a potential naval invasion. Then in 1673, he won the back-to-back -back battles of Schoenveld, using the shallow water to his advantage, severely damaging the combined fleet and shattering a blockade for a second time. Lastly, at the Battle of Kikduin, he fought the Allies off despite being outnumbered again, stopping a seaborne invasion dead in its tracks and protecting a spice convoy in the process. This drove a wedge between the English and the French, and their alliance would fall apart pretty soon after. For his overwhelming success, he was given the special rank of Lieutenant Admiral General, formally making him second only to the Stadtholder, but informally giving him the highest military rank in the country. The English pulled out of the war in 1674, which just left France. The French land forces still occupied a big chunk of the Netherlands, and de Ryder was tasked with drawing attention away while the Dutch attempted to dislodge the occupiers. In July, he took a brief but violent violent vacation to the island of Martinique in the Caribbean, however his attempt to take the island failed when this plan of attack was leaked, and he had a disease outbreak, making him take 5% attrition, so he had to go home. In 1675, he was sent to the Mediterranean one last time, with the most ironic twist of fate being that he was sent to help out the fucking Spanish of all people to cuck the French out of Sicily. He unfortunately had to dick around for two months because of a lack of money and bodies, and he was unable to really do anything in Sicily proper because of the aforementioned lack of bodies. He would first encounter the French 
Spain fleet in January of 1676 at the Battle of Stromboli, where he was outnumbered and outgunned in a disadvantaged position, but still managed to eke out a draw that forced both sides to go home for repairs. Now, De Ryder was almost 70 by this point. Any sane individual would have retired from his line of work 20 years ago, but he had a job to do, and he had one last battle up his sleeve. In April of 1676, his fleet had joined up with an actually prepared Spanish fleet, and he ceded his command role to the Spanish Admiral in preparation for a renewed attempt to take Sicily. On the 22nd, the Battle of Augusta would take place. The Spanish Admiral was unfortunately a general wait and see, allowing the French to gang up on De Ryder's squadron and cause issues. He held his own, giving the French a good mauling before electing to make a tactical withdrawal to not get fucking annihilated. In this, he would succeed. The Dutch didn't lose a single ship on that day, excluding a few that were damaged almost beyond seaworthiness. However, during the retreat, a stray cannonball would strike him in the leg. Both sides quickly dipped from the battle site to repair and regroup. De Ryder's wound would unfortunately prove to be fatal, and he would die in Syracuse on April 29th, 1676, at the age of 69. Despite this serious victory on behalf of the French, they still held a deep respect for the man. The ship carrying his body was allowed to sail past the French fleet, who honored him with a gun salute. He received a state funeral and was buried in the New Kirk Church in Amsterdam. His legacy was continued on by his son Engel, who went on to have a respectable naval career of his own. As a veteran of seven wars and over a dozen formal battles, the man is renowned in the Netherlands to this day, and six ships have borne his name. He saw the Netherlands through some of the most turbulent times in its history, had a fun time being an extremely skilled naval commander, and got to fucking humiliate the English in the process. Overall, pretty based if you ask me. That about does it for this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.